Hello and welcome back to Stu Structures. We're here to finish our build on the water tower for Billington, West Virginia on the B&O Railroad. So stay tuned. So welcome back to Stu Structures. I am Mark Stewart and we are here to continue that build. We last In the last video we had the whole body and the main tank and everything done for this water tower. There's a whole lot of steel supports and stuff that went under this and cross bracing and you know a little bit of plumbing that we have to do to make this thing usable on the model railroad. So um, let's just jump into this and uh, finish building this and uh, have another structure done for the railroad. So jump into it with me and here we go. When we left this last time, we had the main wooden structure and everything done for the tower. So we need to look, start looking at all this steel that goes underneath of it that supports this. And we do have this drawing. And the first thing we need to start with are all these uh, joists that go underneath the flooring. This is wood before the steel gets underneath of that for supports. Now I don't have any of the right size boards and the boards I ordered ended up being the wrong size when they came in and not what I ordered. So I have this wood stock here though that's the right thickness. So I just came back and sliced all these boards out of that wood and made my own joist. And there are some that are just slightly thicker than others but they're close enough that I don't think it's going to be noticeable. So I go out and spray it all with black paint and get them all pre-painted and then bring them in and cut every one to length individually uh, and I did these one foot on center all the way across the bottom of the decking and I did this 90 degrees to the wood decking I scribed in the wood now for the steel underneath you know I'm just using the styrene I-beams that I get in uh, bulk from a supplier on eBay and I get a couple different sizes that I want there's one that's a 12 inch beam and one there's I don't know it's between a 6 and an 8 inch beam but underneath all those rafters there's four main supports here that uh, support all those joists underneath that floor so I paint those and glue those into place and out on either end to support the ends of the other joists that are unsupported that thin I-beam I cut and then it's in an angle and angles from each of those short I-beams to the long I-beams and this supports the end of the rest of those joists out underneath. Now the steel underneath, you know, I, I, I don't have exactly the right size of I-beam, but I go to this drawing and start looking at all this, and I see the, the uprights come to about a foot off the ground, set on concrete pedestals, and there's, you know, all kinds of X bracing and plates in here. So I need to make all these legs to begin with. So I just get out my chopper, because I want them to be all the exact same height, and cut all these legs. And the tops and bottoms of these have uh, steel plates that are on them that they bolt to all the other, uh, you know, ironwork and stuff. So I come back and add these plates to the top and bottom of every leg that goes on this structure. And then I have the basic assembly for the legs done. Now where the X bracing is, I just figured it was better to come back and mark the center of these to begin with now so it's easier than it when it would be on the structure. I come back and scratch some uh, paint off of areas where all these glue down to. And you do see some angle supports, I'll go into this more later. But I want to start working on the center cage of this to begin with. So I come back and glue those four legs into place that make the center cage of all this. I go through my stuff and I find this angle iron. And this is the smallest I could get my hands on. It's just a little bigger than I would like, but it'll work and it'll look okay on this. And then at those center points of all the legs, I need, just need to put an angle iron. That, and this braces the whole assembly makes it easier to work with. And then we come back and start the X bracing on all these. Now one side of these is under the plates and one side's over the plates. So I just come back and do all this angle bracing in one direction. And then I cut a bunch of plates that go on where those meet on the iron work because the other angle will sit on top of these plates. 
So once all these are cut, I just come back and add those on top of all those joints in the center of all those legs. Now the X bracing where it meets on you know the other ends of these also need different type of plates but they're cut a little different so I come back and cut all those secondary plates and then uh, come back and glue all those where the tops and bottoms are and where the other X bracing will glue to and then I have a good surface to come back and add all the secondary angles across all the other angles. So I glue those down and glue the centers of them where each of the angles cross each other as well. And uh, that's the basic middle assembly. Now I don't want to have to get in to paint all this after I do the rest of the assembly. So I go ahead and pre-paint all this black and uh, just it's going to make it a whole lot easier to come back and work with. And then I start adding my uh, other legs on the outside edge and the angle bracing that, you know, attaches them all in place. And I do all this center bracing first and it, you know, just makes it easy so I don't come back and knock a leg off or something in the process of me doing all this. And I get all those outer legs done. And then I come back and start with the X bracing just like we did on the other assembly and we do all of them in one direction and we add the center plates around those now there are some extra plates where these assemblies uh, glue back to the other structure that i have to come back and add as well so i'll cut some more of these and add those in too then once we get those extra plates on and the cross bracing on the second layer and the other plates we have all our steel together underneath and uh, you know this is a good support system there's a few things at odd angles but uh, basically you know it, it looks pretty good and I couldn't rotate this shot so I'm rotating this on my turntable once it's painted to give you an idea of what it looks like uh, I messed up my photography on this so I apologize for that but you get the idea that it looks really good once the paint's on now we need to add the downspout and uh, you know I do have an original drawing of what the downspouts were on these uh, so I just blew up a couple of the individual shots of it to give you an idea of how the bracing and everything was and the the lines that raised and lowered the uh, you know the bucket and everything uh, you know so this gives me a good idea of how to build this but uh, you know I do have a couple of pictures and by blowing up the two pictures that I had too you know it gives me some ideas this isn't exactly the way the one that uh, I'm building would be but it gives me an idea how things were and this is closer to what I'm doing so you know this this has all the detail right there to look at and, and build it the way it needs to be built so I went through my junk box and I did come up with this piece of an old uh, water stand so I'm going to use parts off of this to try and, and, and cut up and make the the water spout and everything that weeds needs to be on this tank so I cut these two piece black pieces off here and I found a piece of old sprue that'll work for the main downpipe coming out of the tank out to this. I cut off the pulley from the old assembly and added it to the top of this uh, water column here because it needs a pulley on it for the up and down rope action. And then the downpipe comes out and I put it through you know, a piece of that old valve that I cut off the other one and cut an angle on the end out there so that I could mount the uh, end piece on there. Now there's several pieces of wood so I went through my junk box and found these several pieces here that'll work for uh, you know to cut the parts I need and I need two real long strips that I cut out of those and then three other wooden pieces and the one wood piece has a circular indentation cut in the top of it that the pipe will rest on and I just go outside and rattle can these all black and you know from there I, I have all my wood ready to start working with and we can start gluing everything together. So I put this wooden uh, braces underneath of there first and glue them into place and then I come back and glue my piping and everything on top of that and that all supports each other and it all glues to the uh, 
X bracing and all that of the steel underneath as well so that gives the basic uh, structure of it together there now there's these two long poles which go on either side which connect clear up to the roof system and down into the inside of that wooden bracket that I just put on then there's two cross braces that go across that for pulleys and you know part of the mechanisms and, and uh, rope work and all that type of thing I have an old ship model that I just you know, scavenged for parts a long time ago and these pulleys are part of the rigging off that ship so I attach those to the top beam and run cords between there and the top of the uh, you know the, the water spout and that's basically the construction of that now we also have this ladder that goes on the back side of the tank and I have this drawing from the standard plans and we do have a couple of pictures here as well which uh, you know shows all the bracing how it attached to the tank and uh, everything down below so you know I've got plenty of information here I don't have a ladder really that's you know this long so I just decided I'm gonna go ahead and make a ladder I mean they're kind of tedious but they're not that hard to build so I went through my styrene and found these parts I used my chopper to cut all the widths for the rungs going up and just used my HO scale rule and laid out two side pieces and you know mark where all the treads will go and I just lay it next to my square and just come up through and glue the rungs onto one side of the ladder all the way up now to top of it the ladder has two arch pieces that connect the ladder up to the roof so you know I don't have these either so I'm just gonna cut them so I, I drew circles on some styrene of the sizes I needed and I just come back and I use an exacto knife and a file and just cut the outside of the arch and then come back and cut the inside of the arch out as well and just use files to cut and get it as smooth as possible uh, they're a little rough but you know it, it, they're not going to be that bad and then once I get the, the ladder all finished we're ready to start getting the whole assembly attached to the uh, water tank itself now I went through that smallest uh, styrene angle I had and I cut several pieces here because this all attaches with angles uh, brackets to the side of the tank and you can see two up by the roof here and two down on the center bracing of the X bracing on the steel underneath and this is just the start so that I can mount the ladder between those two points and then from there I can figure out the rest of the angles and how far out the braces come to to support uh, the rest of the ladder. Now off that same ship model, you know, where the cannon ports were, there were these uh, you know, hatches. So I just took one of those hatches and used it on the roof and glued my round pieces onto the top of the ladder and a couple more angles up there for that and a footboard down onto the roof and that's you know the whole ladder assembly in place now this all sits on a foundation so I went through my wood once again and found some real large square stock and just glued the foundation for the center part of the building and you know just so that it, none of the cracks or anything show I used this green putty on it and filled all the cracks and you know went ahead and painted it a concrete color and then glued it underneath now this is really tall because I'm worried about the clearance of the water spout so I'm making all these foundations tall and then once I mount them to uh, the side of uh, beside the railroad then I can fill up around these concrete foundations and right now the concrete pieces that come up and meet the steel legs are a little at an angle and stuff there's not much attached them to the bottom of the steel so I'm gonna to have to straighten these when I glue them onto the model railroad and start playing with the ballast underneath the tank and everything as well as the ladder you know doesn't touch the ground so once it's in place on the layout I'm gonna to have to find a foundation to work for the ladder as well uh, but you know basically this turned out really well and I'm very pleased with the way this uh, came out it looks good 
Now there across the track from where the water tank was, there was a water spout in Billington, just like in this picture here. You know, I'd, I'd, I didn't really want to make one, so when I was ordering a bunch of parts from Tichy, I just went ahead and ordered a wall of water column from Tichy. There, you know, it's not that expensive. It's a really nice, highly detailed uh, kit. And you know, it's got good directions with it. And it took a little time to assemble. It's got some wire to use and various things on, you know, for parts. So it, you know, it takes a little bit of time, but it's not that involved and it's not that hard to put together. It comes on its own concrete pedestal with a, a, a hatch down there for the water to drain. And once it's painted, you know, it, it's a nice looking piece to go across the track from the water tank. So I have that as well. So now we have a wooden water tower for the city of Beelington. So we have a way to get water. Well, almost. We need to build a pumping station too. We'll work on that next. Uh, but then we'll have a way to get water into the steam locomotive so we can operate out of Beelington, West Virginia. Uh, you know, I like this wooden water tower. Uh, there was some more uh, plates that went on to the iron work and some of what I did, you know, isn't exactly right, but it looks good. And, uh, you know, I think the structure pretty much really looks like the structure that was there. If somebody wanted to get up really close and personal and count rivets and do all those types of things, they're going to find flaws. But I'm happy with it. I think it looks good and it really represents the one that was there. Uh, you know, so uh, I'm going to live with it the way it is. I think it's fine. In any case, thank you for coming back and sharing this time with me. I hope you're learning something from watching my videos. Uh, hopefully this helps you jump out there and build some structures of your own. Uh, if you have questions or comments, put them down below. I answer everything that comes in to me and I try to help people where I can. Uh, you know, that's what it's all about is the sharing of information. Uh, everybody has their own way of doing things, but hopefully my ways will uh, learn help you learn how to do some things for your model railroad in any case like and share this information uh, subscribe to my channel uh, you know and come back and watch all my videos then when you're notified that I have one I try to get one out every Friday day and during the day at some point in time uh, summertime's coming up I am gonna get busy once this coronavirus goes away and I can travel back to Virginia to work again uh, but for right now, we're still putting out buildings. I'm still having some time to build each week. So we'll continue to do this until uh, I give you a further notice on the change of conditions. Uh, anyway, thank you again and happy model railroading.